In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to combine cool vector textures and the profile toolpath to create a number of exciting texture panels. All the vectors used in this tutorial were created using the vector texture tool, which was covered in the vector drawing tutorial that can be accessed through the related video section on this web page. Well, first we're going to close down this part and then open the original drawing part that we created in the previous tutorial. So file close. And then we're going to open the vector textures vector drawing. CRV file and here we're presented now with a new part with a number of different textures contained on different layers. So if we move up to our layer drop down we can see there are five layers cutout, wave, step, swirl and wood grain. The first one is cutout which is the rectangular profile we see on the screen which will be needed to trim away the edge in order to create a seamless tile and we'll take a look at that at the end of this tutorial. So I'm going to switch that off now and we're going to deal with the first of the four textures which is the wave pattern that we see on the screen which is sort of horizontally across the middle of the page. So with that now I'm going to uh, just come across and toggle from the drawing menu through to the machining menu and we're going to start by setting up our material. So with this now we are using three quarter inch material, uh, our XY datum is in the lower left hand corner, our Z0 will be on the material surface and we've suitably set up our rapid and home positions. So I'm going to OK that now, select the texture on the screen and then come into the profile toolpath menu on the right hand side. So we're going to start from the top, our cutting depth will initially be zero since we'll be going from the material surface and we're going to cut down in this case just by 0.1 of an inch. But I'm not going to use my half inch ball, I'm actually going to use a quarter inch ball to start with and I'm going to select that from the menu. Uh, we're going to machine the vectors directly on them okay and we're just going to give that a name in this case it will be the same as the layout which will be wave and I'll now calculate. So we have now a toolpath on the screen following the profiles down to a depth of 0.1. And I'm just going to preview that toolpath now to see the finished effect. So a couple of things to note here. First of all, of course, we can see at the edges that we've got these ridges left where the tool has not, because it's coming in at an angle, it's left material there that would need to be removed. But of course, we're going to trim this away with the cutout profile towards the end. Hence the need to create a slightly oversized panel and then look to trim it back to the, the cutout rectangle. Now, the other item that to note is the fact that there seems to be a flat ridge being left here where the tool isn't actually removing all the material. So what I'll do, I'll come to a tiled view now horizontally and we'll just take a look at the 2D view and zoom in now. Here we can see the vectors that we'll be using. Now the distance between these two vectors is 0.3 of an inch and we're only using a 0.25 inch tool. So there's going to be an issue here where we're going to be leaving a ridge even if the tool is cutting down to the full radius. So if we just show that now by drawing a circle, in this case it's 0.25 diameter, and I'm just going to place it on the two vectors, and we can clearly see that even if they were cutting down by 0.125 of an inch, we're going to be leaving material in between. So with that, I'm just going to just delete out those two vectors now, and clearly this has indicated to me that I need to be using a larger tool. So with this, I'm just going to go to full size screen here on the simulation and we're just going to reset that preview now, come back into the toolpath by double clicking on it and go to the tool section and select the half inch ball rather than the quarter inch ball and just recalculate the toolpath. I'm now going to re-simulate that to see what we get and you can see clearly that we've got a nice ridge where that tool is overlapping with the adjacent profile to trim away to create this very, very nice effect. So I'm happy now with the first of our four sort of textured panels, which is the wave. So I'm gonna come back to the 2D view now, and we're just gonna swap out and move away from using the wave, and we are going to use the step pan. As you can see, it sort of steps up through the page, hence the name step. So. I'm just going to select that pattern now, come back over, close the preview down and come straight back up and create a new toolpath. Once again, I'm just going to go down by a depth of 0.1. And in this case, I am going to be using the ball nose half inch. That will remain. I'm going to be machining the vectors on and I just need to change the name to be step in line with the layer. So as I calculate that now, we've got a new toolpath. So I need to reset the preview and just play that out. And we can see that's quite a nice dynamic effect. 
but we've already created the wave pattern using the half inch ball so what I'd like to do maybe is explore a different tool so I'm just going to undo that last preview and then come back into the step toolpath and look to change away from the half inch ball nose to use a V bit so I'm going here with a sort of 90 degree half inch but could be bigger but in this case it's the important thing is the 90 degree so we're going to be going down once again just by a tenth a uh, hundred thou tenth of an inch and I'm just going to calculate that now and everything looks okay and now I'm going to preview but clearly you can see here that the tool is not crossing over so we've got definite flat ridges it's narrower where the vectors are closer and it's wider where the vectors are further apart which is quite a nice effect but if I did actually want to uh, remove the flat and have the uh, the tool pass essentially intersecting then I need to either do two things one change the tool maybe go to a uh, 120 degree bit or similarly maybe change the depth so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm just going to undo that come back into the tool path and rather than go down by 0.1 inch I'm actually going to go down by 0.2 inches this time and calculate and now if I play that out we can see here that we've got a deeper groove it's sort of more dynamic especially with the use of that v-bit tool and we can see that we've got a really really nice texture so once again that sort of different use of the tool which with the larger step down creates a really nice dynamic texture so anyway let's move away from the step now and come back up to the 2d view and i'm going to switch off the step and switch on the swirl and make that swirl active and as you can see here, we've got a sort of a variable texture. And if we come across to the actual tool that was used to create that texture, you can see that we can specify the amplitude, wavelength, noise, and spacing. And in this particular case, we use the variation here in order to get the effect that you see on the screen.